with profound, humble gratitude and love to all venerated enlightened masters, we bow to the Almighty in soulful gratefulness for gifting us with their holy, blessed presence. May all beings be awakened by their divine grace. Part one of four. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. The universe does not exist for man's sake, but that each being exists for its own sake. Thus we believe in the creation, and yet need not inquire what purpose is served by each species. Please continue watching to hear the wisdom of medieval Jewish philosopher and Rabbi Moses Maimonides, vegetarian. I realized at an early age that all animals desire to live, and none wants to be exploited or killed for their eggs, milk, or flesh, so I went vegan, Sada vegan. Shalom is hello in the Hebrew language. I am Isaac. The kind-hearted people of Israel send you love and joy. May heaven's light always shine on you and your loved ones. Welcome to On the Divine Wisdom from The Guide for the Perplexed by Maimonides, Vegetarian, Part 1 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. Maimonides, also known as Harambam or Rabbi Moses ben Maimon, was a notable medieval Jewish philosopher, astronomer, physician, and intellectual figure, born into a prominent family in Spain. Maimonides' path eventually led him to Morocco and Palestine until he finally settled in Egypt, in El Fostat, near Cairo. Shortly after moving to Egypt, life-changing events prompted him to start his practice as a physician. It was not long before Maimonides became renowned in the area and became the personal physician to the Sultan Saladin, a famous Muslim military leader. He also tended to other patients, lectured before fellow physicians, and became a leader of the Jewish community, teaching and helping its members. Famous works by Maimonides include Mishneh Torah, a commentary on the Talmud, and The Guide for the Perplexed, philosophical discussions regarding theological matters. A revered pillar of the Jewish world, Rabbi Moses ben Maimon, also had a significant influence on some great medieval writers and thinkers, such as Baruch Spinoza and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, and made an important impact on the medieval science archives. Today, we will read selections from Part 3, Chapter 13 in Rabbi Moses ben Maimon's book, The Guide for the Perplexed, to better comprehend the true nature of the universe. Part 3, Chapter 13 There is no occasion to seek the final cause of the whole universe, neither according to our theory of the creation, nor according to the theory of Aristotle, who assumes the eternity of the universe. 
Those who acknowledge the truth will accept as the best proof for the creation the fact that everything in nature serves a certain purpose so that one thing exists for the benefit of another. This fact is supported by numerous instances and shows that there is design in nature. But the existence of design in nature cannot be imagined unless it be assumed that nature has been produced. Aristotle has already explained that in nature, the efficient cause of a thing, its form, and its final cause are identical. Every individual thing arrives at its perfection fully and completely when the actions that produce its form are complete. The ultimate purpose of the species is a perpetuation of this form by the repeated succession of genesis and destruction so that there might always be a being capable of the greatest possible perfection. It seems therefore clear that, according to Aristotle, who assumes the eternity of the universe, there is no occasion for the question of, what is the object of the existence of the universe? We must, in continuing the inquiry as to the purpose of the creation, it was the will of God, or his wisdom decreed it, and this is the correct answer. The wise men in Israel have, therefore, introduced in our prayers for Ne'ilah, of the Day of Atonement, the following passage. Thou has distinguished man from the beginning, and chosen him to stand before thee. Who can say unto thee, What do thou? And if he be righteous, what does he give thee? They have thus clearly stated that it was not a final cause that determined the existence of all things, but only his will. The universe does not exist for man's sake, but that each being exists for its own sake and not because of some other thing. Thus, we believe in the creation and yet need not inquire what purpose is served by each species of the existing things because we assume that God created all parts of the universe by his will, some for their own sake and some for the sake of other beings that include their own purpose in themselves. In the same manner as it was the will of God that man should exist, so it was his will that the heavens with their stars should exist, that there should be angels, and each of these beings is itself the purpose of its own existence. When anything can only exist provided some other thing has previously existed, God has caused the latter to precede it, as, for example, sensation precedes comprehension. We meet also with this view in scripture. The Lord has made everything for its purpose. It is possible that the pronoun in la manihu refers to the object, but it can also be considered as agreeing with the subject, in which case the meaning of the word is for the sake of himself or his will, which is identical with his self or essence, as has been shown in the treatise. We have also pointed out that his essence is also called his glory, the words, the Lord has made everything for himself, express, therefore, the same idea as the following verse. Everything that is called by my name, I have created it for my glory. I have formed it, yea, I have made it. Study the book which leads all who want to be led to the truth and is therefore called Torah, Law, or Instruction, from the beginning of the account of the creation to its end, and you will comprehend the opinion which we attempt to expound. For no part of the creation is described as being in existence for the sake of another part, but each part is declared to be the product of God's will, and to satisfy by its existence the intention of the Creator. This is expressed by the phrase, And God saw that it was good. You know our interpretation of the saying of our sages. Scripture speaks the same language as is spoken by man, but we call good that which is in accordance with the object we seek. When therefore scripture relates in reference to the whole creation, and God saw all that he had made, and behold, it was exceedingly good. It declares thereby that everything created was well fitted for its object and would never cease to act and never be annihilated. This is especially pointed out by the word exceedingly, for sometimes a thing is temporarily good, it serves its purpose, and then it fails and ceases to act. 
But as regards the creation, it is said that everything was fit for its purpose and able continually to act accordingly. Just because you are frustrated in bed, making war won't satisfy you. Noble viewers, thank you for your company today. Please join us again tomorrow for part two of this program. Coming up next is The Rates of Nepal, Nomads of the Forest, right after noteworthy news. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more uplifting programming. Through the grace of the divine, may you always be blessed in heaven's love and illumination. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash WOW. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule et suprememastertv.com bar oblique WOW. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule et suprememastertv.com barra inclinada WOW. Choi Bang Songun, Tayangan Honor Chegumamida. 다음을 참고하세요. suprememastertv.com/schedule/wow